All right, so it's critical during this uh, explanation that you keep chatter down because I'm recording. Um, not that you guys chatter anyway, but or you, but you can ask me questions. That's the reason. All right, so we need to be able to set out a grid on this page. If you have taken painting already, you already know what this grid is about, surely. Um, Online, there are going to be some, if you click through Project 2, you'll see some reference images for you to work from. We are going in this project to slavishly copy almost as close as we can, stroke for stroke, an existing drawing of a cast, like a plastic cast, of a hand or a foot. So this rhymes with the first project we did with hands and feet. This time you're doing one, one page only. You can pick, there are three hands to choose from, three feet to choose from. You pick the one that looks the most exciting to you, such as it is. So, but before we even get started, we need to be able to lay out this grid on the page. We are bypassing the gesture and measuring and all of that stuff for this assignment, this project. We're going straight to, we're going to grid it out, transfer the drawing, and then we're going straight to the value application. The idea behind this project is that it's going to instill in you or give you some practice at putting vault value down in a consistent, careful, deliberate manner rather than just scrubbing it on in. You'll have plenty of time to really refine this drawing. So gather closely round as I show you how to do this grid. The nice thing about this grid is you don't really have to do any measuring, like tick every one inch. At the first, it's helpful to do that. And then after that, you're just sort of uh, making lines. So, a few notes. This grid needs to disappear by the time the drawing is finished, which means you put it in very lightly. If you want to use a graphite pencil, I have a 2B here. That's going to, that, if you do it lightly, that'll sort of fall back and not be very intrusive, uh, and you won't have to erase anything if you use it. If you want to do a charcoal only, you can use a charcoal pencil, but you have to be very, very light with it. The problem we have with rulers is when we go to make a line with a ruler, we push down on the ruler to hold it still, and we push down with the pencil too for whatever reason. And what that does is it scribes a line, a really dark line in the page, nearly impossible to get rid of. So believe it or not, I've already put a line on this page with the graphite pencil. It's not very strong. I can't see it very well. so. I'm going to show you how to start up this thing. So I'm just going to go corner to corner on this first line. I like to put one end of my ruler dead on the corner and then plant my finger there. So when I pivot this ruler, it pivots on this point, And I can line it up with the second corner and be pretty close. So I'm double checking this to make sure it hasn't moved. And in fact, it has moved a little bit. So I'm going to fix that now. The more precise you are at this stage, the more precise your overall drawing is going to be after you transfer it. If you're lazy with the grid, when you transfer it, it's going to end up looking kind of lazy and disproportionate because your grid's not accurate. And the one on your reference image is totally accurate. All right, so I'm just going to let the weight of the pencil do the work here. I'm barely pushing. That's plenty. If you're on the video, you can't even see it. But here in real life, you see that super faint line. That's about all you need this grid throughout. So I would not go much darker than that, or you're going to have some erasing to do because that needs to go away. So for the rest of this grid explanation, I'm going to use my darker pencil with darker lines so it shows up on that screen better. So I'm just going to reinforce the line. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just making an X. So there's my first line. There's my second line, that corner, make sure I'm still lined up over there. Always double check your corners after you move the ruler. After you move the ruler, just double check and make sure you're in line. Because I can move this one and be like, nope, get that one perfect, sweet, and scribe a line. And down here, I'm way off. You don't want to do that. So make sure after you've set things up. See, I'm going to move to this corner. Simultaneously, that corner has moved. I just want to make sure. before I scribe my line that it's where I want. There's my X. 
and you're going to do the exact same thing on your good sheet of paper, just make an X. This point where the two lines meet, and this is the way you find the center of any rectangle, is the dead center of that rectangle, both this side and that side. So this is an 18 by 24 sheet of paper. If I was accurate, this should happen at 9 inches in and 12 inches up. I can verify that. Set my zero mark there. Just a hair, like a 16th or 32nd under 9 inches there. And dead on 9 inches there. We at here. 12. Excuse me, Amanda. And 12. So that's dead center, and it always will be. If you go from perfect corner to perfect corner on a rectangle, you will get the dead center of that. So 9 by 12 is the magic number here. I'm just going to tick that. You can, I mean, you don't have to do this step, but I would. I'm just going to tick my 9 on the short side. Tick my 9 on the short side. Tick my 12 on the long side. And tick my 12 on the long side. So that centers on the edges. Now I'm done measuring. I don't need to use the ruler for measuring anymore. And what that's going to help me do is I need to put a vertical and horizontal line now to continue this grid. And it passes through this center spot. And I can just do it with the ruler. But if I eyeball it, I might end up like that. That's not a straight line. So ticking those centers helps me keep this perfectly straight. And that first ticking of the edges halfway is the only time I'm going to need to do that. So there's my vertical line through. There's my horizontal line through. And remember, yours is going to be much lighter than this. This is so it'll show up over here. All right, I need to continue this grid because I've got the first stage down. Uh, what I'm going to do, I have four <coughs> quadrants now. I'm going to put an X in each of those quadrants. And that's just going to go from this line to that line. I'm doing that same thing that I did on the larger rectangle in each of these smaller rectangles. So there's an X in that one. I'm essentially finding dead center in each of these rectangles. All right, so now I need to divide these up into verticals and horizontals. I'm going to pass verticals through both of those X's, that's going to keep me straight. So I can just line this X up with that X and strike a vertical. Again, I'm going, I'm pushing down harder than you need to on this. I'm just going to keep saying that. So there are my verticals. This is going to divide this thing into 16 little squares. I'm doing the same thing horizontally. So now I'm getting a grid laid out on this. It's consistent. It's cross-divided into these triangles. I need to make more X's now. This is where it starts to get a little bit visually confusing. What I would pay attention to when you're putting this together is the diamond shape. You need three of those, one on the outside, next one, and the next one. You'll see that on the reference, and maybe I'll pull it up as well in just a second so we can all see it. Uh, so I'm going to X some more, but I'm going to ignore this outer edge, and I'm just going to X this center circle. Essentially, I'm going to put a diamond in, and I'm going to do it like this. Right there, I'm going to make an X, just on these middle four rectangles. There, I'm going to make an X. There, you're going to make an X. See that second diamond? Now I need a third diamond. How am I going to get it? 
I have to go verticals and horizontals again. And I'm only going to do that on these four center squares as well. One. Oop, got a little out of vertical there. Two. Double checking your ruler every time. All right, and I'm almost done. I just need to make one more diamond in these new in these smaller four rectangles that I made. That's the absolute center. This is all focusing in right on the absolute center of this page. Yeah. And that's my grid. That's all I need. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. You just have to be a little bit careful. What this allows me to do, has anybody in here ever drawn from a grid before? Good, we all have somewhat experience with it. The, the reason to grid a drawing is to eliminate the need to worry about proportion because you have this consistent grid feeding you information about where things need to intersect, where lines need, or where uh, the contour lines of the object need to go. You'll be coming along and say, okay, the start of this line is like right here on this angle, so that's easy. And then it passes through the bottom like third of this one in kind of an arc. So, and then it seems to curl out like this and wrap around like that. That helps you to draw the thing in without worrying about it getting way out of proportion. Just a fair warning about this approach, however. I really dislike this approach as a drawing approach. I really do. It's, a, it's the fastest way I can think of to like rip the soul out of your drawing, if I can put it in harsh terms. Um, this is more a transfer method. In fact, I would say it's primarily a transfer method, not a draw method. If you get a photo, grid it, transfer the grid, fill it in, and here I'm giving you my own bias. You, you have just removed yourself as a human being from the process. You're just glor a glorified sort of printer okay. at that point. Um, you will get good results proportion-wise. You'll be like, ooh, it's a dead ringer proportion-wise but you've lost all of your own personal interpretation of that thing that you're drawing. And part of the beauty of being an artist is getting enough experience, building that uh, base of experience that you have to interpret something and make it feel like that thing on the page, not just make it look like the thing on the page. Does that make sense? If we look at this drawing here, that feels so human in its pose and, and the way that it's put together, this Egon Schiele drawing. But it's not perfect, it's not like a perfect fo photo reproduction, right? It's more, it's more drawing than that. And it may seem, here's where I'm getting, I'm gonna start moralizing to you. Uh, it may seem um, tempting maybe is the word, or it may seem like a goal to shoot for, well I just wanna do drawings that look exactly like a photo. I would, I question that as a motive for drawing. To me, there's something at the bottom of that, which is just, I want people to admire my genius or something, or I want them to admire my skill at being able to make it look like a photo. And I'm here to tell you that there's more to drawing than that. There's more to art than just trying your best to replicate a photo, or even trying your best to rep re replicate life, even though that may, to me, that's a little bit better of a pursuit. Uh, what I'm interested in is, in, is a wealth of visual experience at life, and then an interpretation of that. So, all of that to circle back around and say, this is okay for transferring, as far as I'm concerned. It's a good transfer method. If you have a drawing at a small scale, and you're like, I really want to put this on a large surface, but I like the original drawing I have, boom, you grid it out, you can transfer it up, you can make tweaks and stuff to it. As a crutch, this is horrendous. So just know that that's, that's my philosophy out there. Lorraine, did you have a question? No, I'm just, I'm, why do we have to learn it then? Because what I want you to focus on this assignment. So it's good to learn, 
in case you want to transfer. So say I have an eight and a half by 11 drawing I did, and I want to paint it on a three by five foot, three foot by five foot canvas. I could redraw the whole thing, but I might not have some of the like interesting things that I did in the original drawing. If I transfer my own drawing, I'm much less likely to lose information because I did the original drawing. Right? So I can make it big. You can scale it up to the size of a building wall, 20 feet by 30 feet, using the same method. So it's good for that. For this particular assignment, it is a way to bypass the odd proportions and mis mismeasurements that we ha still have as we're practicing measuring and getting proportions down. Because what I want us to be focusing on is what we just covered, which is the smooth transitions of value, hard edges where they should be hard, soft edges where they should be soft, without having to worry about, did I make the toes the right size? Is the foot weird? Why does it still look weird? That's all going to so go away. Our finished project should be exactly. Your finished like project finish. will almost look identical to this, minus all of the haze that's around it. So this is the critical part, or this is the this is why the grid, because I want you to spend all of your time here, not measuring, trying to figure things out. Well, it's good enough. Nope. Use the grid, get it mapped out, and spend all of the rest of your time developing these values. Right? Look how dark this is on this edge. It's almost as black as the pencil will go. And then look how abruptly, relatively, that, trans that transitions into the light here versus over here where it takes a lot longer to do so. Yeah, because you got the that ankle bone. pushes that ankle bone back into the shadow a little bit. Look at the way that this, the little white halo around here where the sort of plaster meets the stand. Look, thin line out here on the light side of this thing thick, heavy lines on the shadow side of this thing. Look at that little quick transition there. Lightens up a tiny bit, darkens. That gives us that form very nicely, very convincingly. Right? So you'll be able, on top of your drawing, your drawing will be just about exactly like this. It should be pretty much exactly like this because if you're gridding, it's going to transfer at the same proportion, same position on the page, same everything. But you want us to clean it up, like the edges? To clean it up. The, so then... Once you have it drawn in, you can see little artifacts of their grid still here. That's fine. Um, then it's about, how dark do I go here? A lot of the things in this project that I see are people not going dark enough. They don't push that charcoal all the way to the darkest. When you look online, and I'll, maybe I'll pop it up here in a second. When you look at the references online, you'll have a faint version with a very clear grid to help you with the drawing on top of the grid you make on your page. And then there will be the same drawing without the grid in full value. Darks as dark as they need to be, lights as light as they need to be. Tara, did you have a question? Um, it was like, how long should we How spend? long should we be spending on this project? As much time as you can. Like, if someone's got into this project and spent seven hours, eight hours, ten hours, delightful. Night before, two hours, not going to cut it. So if you're a night before person, I sorry, you're going to need, unless you spend, you know, six hours the night before, but 4 a.m. is, it's, a, it's easy to get lazy with your values that way. If you're fresh and you, and you come at it in stages and you give yourself the time you need, you can really dial these in really quite uh, subtly. And my, my hope is that off the back of this assignment, when you come into class, you'll be like, you'll have sort of that sensitive hand. I've spent the summer and done much as I much as it killed my soul to, to just straight up copy the best I could, the proportions on these and then the values. After that process, I was doing it for a very particular purpose, which was to get sensitivity and putting value down. You take that with you. It's important not to stay here as a thing. You come here to get the sensitivity, to get the value building up, how dark you need to go, how that transition is going to work. You bring all of that information back to your drawing, your approach. And then you have the option to be sensitive because you've practiced it, rather than being like, well, I just don't know how to do it. You will know how to do it. And I promise, if you devote the time, these, this, there's someone chose an even more complicated hand over there. People who spend the time on this, even if they're like, I'm just not very good at drawing, they come with things and it is like, whoa. They're like, I had no idea I could do that. The grid helps you get rid of the proportion issue, and then you spend that time. It's just spending time and being careful. And then the, the hope is, eventually, your own proportions in your drawing get sufficient that when you do, when you put value on your own drawing, it has the similar 
you're able to sculpt you know, the full value range uh, with your pencil or whatever tool you're using. Questions about this? When's our portfolio due? The portfolio is due after spring break. We will have a week. The next week is portfolio. So when we come back from spring break, we will be going into the uh, anatomy heavy. That There will be one week. It's just straight anatomy. Lights will be on. You'll be drawing muscles and bone like crazy. So prep for that right after spring break. And then we'll be back into workday portfolio. And then the last portfolio section, all full value. You'll have the rest of the semester to, to get down how to deal with these light shadow differences. And I'll be helping keep track of that as well. We good? Mm -hmm. Let me throw the projector up real quick so we can see where to find, so I can just point out these reference images and where to go to see them. You should be able to see them in the assignment. You just click through, but I want to make sure we've all seen it in person as well. <laughs> 